episode 173 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Dr. Michael Brews, who, the author of The Power of Win. The show notes for this episode can be found at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 173. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness. The 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. I'm your host, Alan Meisner. I'm an NSAM certified personal trainer with a specialization in corrective exercise and fitness nutrition. Let me be your coach as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. On this episode of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, you're going to learn why I get most of the things I get done early in the morning and more. Michael Bruce is an expert on chronotypes. In his book, The Power of When, he helps you understand your circadian clock and gives you the tools to be the best you you can be based on your type. And then knowing those around you. My wife and I are different chronotypes, and Michael gives us insight into how we can make that work better. Without further ado, here is Dr. Michael Bruce. So, Michael, welcome to 40 Plus Fitness. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. And I'm, I'm really excited to talk about this book. Sleep is something that I, I just cherish. It's, it's one of my favorite things. I, I look at sleep like a lot of people look at uh, dessert. And they, you know, <laughs> I, I really do just say, okay, it's sleep time. Yay, me. And, you know, in looking at the book and the chronotypes, I thought I was a lion when I first started looking at it. And I said, okay, I think I'm a lion. But interestingly enough, when I kind of went through the process of, of taking the quiz, I barely made it into lion status. And so I, I looked at it and said, okay, maybe I'm still a little bit more bear because, you know, one question difference and I, I would have been a bear. And then you had another little subtest to take to kind of compare and see which one you were on. And I got two out of three. So I definitely have a little bit of bear in me, which is why I think sometimes I can, um, I can stick it out and, and hang out a little bit later than I normally would, but I, I would say I definitely favor being a lion over a bear. Well, you know, a lot of people out there have what's called lion envy. And so, you know, for your listeners, we're talking about these crazy chronotypes that I developed. But uh, the difference is, is that a lot of people really want to be more of an early morning person. But I'm not convinced it's always the best thing. I, I think actually being a bear can be uh, can have several advantages to it. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to try to get into is, is first, let's let's talk about those those chronotypes, because I think I really do think you're onto something pretty special here because I, I know there's a lot of people that will say, well, I'm the early riser and you know I'm a morning person. And I don't, I don't know that I would classify myself so much as a, a morning person as to say that I'm just not a night person. And then, you know, my wife is someone who she'll, she'll, she can go to bed at a reasonable hour, but she's going to wake up after about three or four hours of sleep and then stay up for three or four hours and then go back to bed. So, you know, it was kind of one of these odds. I, I could I could ping her as a as a dolphin almost straight away when I started reading the chronotypes. And and we'll and don't worry, we'll, we'll get into what each of these animals are because I, I, I do kind of like that part of it too. But I want to get into it and kind of get in deep because one of the things that I really liked about the book was it was a great depiction of the differences in people that and I recognized different people as as you went through each one. And then I said, okay, now that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. And then you didn't stop there. You started now then with a practical application of once you know your chronotype, you can start kind of taking advantage of that and you can relate better with people of those different chronotypes because now you understand what you need to do if you want to be a part of that. And like I said, I'm I'm married to a dolphin, so that gives us two very different chronotypes. And so there's some challenges that come with with managing our lifestyle. And I like that your book was was practical to that end of saying, you know, this is some ways that you can manage yourself to to have better relationships, to have a better quality of life. And, and again, anything that 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 helps me sleep better or helps people sleep better. Boom, I'm on it. That's all about it. <laughs> so why don't we go ahead and start out? There there are four there, you know, people know morning person, evening person kind of mindsets. We've talked about those for forever. I mean, as long as I can remember, we've kind of had that I'm a morning person or I'm a, you know, late a not, night owl, I guess was the the bird and you know early bird gets the worm and uh, just all these back and forth but you've come up with a very different approach of breaking us into four chronotypes so could you take a few minutes to kind of discuss the different chronotypes and what they what they mean and, and kind of what they're all about. Sure, sure. So it all actually started with a patient of mine. I'm a actively practicing sleep specialist. I've been uh, in practice for about 16 years and um, my specialty happens to be insomnia. 
And so I get a lot of people walking through the door that are not great sleepers. And um, I had this one woman and uh, she was actually a really tough case. It was difficult to figure out what was going on with her. Most of all of my techniques are research-based, evidence-based techniques. And these are things that I use with patients. I've got a lot of tools in my tool chest, so to speak. And I, I tried every one on this woman. I, everything you could imagine, it just wasn't working. And I finally sat down with her and I, we really started to dig in even more deeply. And she said, you know, Dr. Bruce, it's not that I can't fall asleep and it's not that I can't stay asleep. It's that I sleep at the wrong time. I said, what do you mean you sleep at the wrong time? She said, I would rather go to bed around 1.32 and get up around, you know, 8.39. That would work out great for me. And I, I knew that people out there had shift work sleep disorder. So they've been on shift work, you know, working at night and have to sleep during the day and their, you know, their circadian rhythms can get all screwed up. And, and I have children, I have a 13 year old daughter and a 14 year old son, and they are late night people. They'd rather go to bed at 12 or one and get up at, you know, eight or nine. But I hadn't heard about a lot of people being like that in that extreme as an adult. So I said to her, I said, you know what, let's do an experiment. So I called up her boss. And I said, it, would it be possible for her to come in, you know, two hours later from work and leave two hours later, still the same amount of time there, just later in the day. And he said, well, I'm, I'm really about one week away from firing her because to be honest with you, she can't show up on time. She's falling asleep at meetings. Her work product is really very, you know, minimal. And I, I think she's a great person and I, and I think she could really work out here, but something's going on. And I said, well, I, I think that I think I figured it out, but let's let's give it a shot. And so he let me do it. And uh, I called him back a week later and he said, I don't know what you did, but it's miraculous. She's here at the time that we asked her to be. She's participatory in meetings. Her work product has improved. She's not falling asleep. It's fantastic. And so I said, all right, great. So I then called up her husband to talk with him a little bit. And he said, you know what? I like my wife now. <laughs> I thought that was interesting comment to make. That's good. <laughs> and then he said, and our kids say that mommy's not as cranky anymore. And I was like, okay, that's interesting too. And so, you know, we started to really kind of understand that her whole circadian rhythm was set at a different time than most of the social norms. Then when I was talking with her more, I said, you know, what else have you noticed? And she said, well, I, now that I'm paying more close attention to timing, I discovered that there are certain times during the workday where I do things better than others. Certain times I'm better at reading something, certain times I'm better at writing emails or being creative or things like that. And so I was like, all right, well, that's interesting. And so I dove into the literature to really start to understand this because I figured, I mean, I can't be the only person who's got patients like this. And I wanted to be able to assess or identify these patients when they walk through the door so I could know, you know, how to treat them better. Well, so as you, as you said, stated earlier, you know, there are plenty of tools and assessment techniques that people can use if you're an early person or a night person. But I found that that wasn't the only types of people that were out there. I had the people who were in between, and then I also had my insomniacs, and there was no really good assessment tool. So I said, well, then I guess I'll just have to make one myself. So I created a 35 question quiz, which is available online if people want to check it out. It's the power of when quiz.com, and that'll be in the show notes. And, uh, it takes about two minutes to take it and you fall into one of these four chronotype buckets, if you will. So let me tell you about each one. So I replaced the birds with mammals because I'm a mammal, not a bird. And um, I wanted to replace it with animals that were representative of the, these types of uh, these sleep schedules, if you will. So first one is called a lion. So a lion is my early morning person. Um, lions usually have their first kill at dawn, they're very early animals, but then uh, towards the middle and later part of the day, they definitely get sleepy and kind of doze off. So that's very characteristic of the lions that I find are who are my early birds. These are my real go-getters. They're up at 5.30, they're shooting off the emails, they're doing all these different things. And they're getting a lot of stuff done. They're really great leaders and they're, they have a tendency to be COOs. These are my type A personalities who are getting a lot done. But the problem comes with them is socially. They can't really stay up past 8, 30, 9 o'clock. They have a real difficult time with it. And um, they miss out on a lot of the social aspects of their lives. And, and they miss that part of it. Also, they have a tendency to be very list driven. They'll make a list at the beginning of the day and they'll follow it and they'll you know, go through every single little thing to make sure that they get it all you know, checked off their list. The next are bears. And so bears make up about 55% of the population. And these are my extroverts. I love hanging out with bears. They're always telling funny stories or, you know, the life of the party, you know, the, the, and society really focuses in around bears because bears uh, get up when the sun comes up and they go to sleep, you know, a little bit later than the sun goes down. And, um, these are people who 
are really good at playing hard and working hard. They, they are the workforce of the universe and they really seem to get more done than anybody else. Um, and they're enjoyable to spend time with. The wolves are my late night peoples. And so I am a wolf myself. And my wolves have a tendency to be a little bit more introverted, but they're also my big creatives. These are my musicians, my artists, my actors, my authors. And these are people who are a little standoffish at first. They don't trust people easily, but once they like you, you pretty much can't shut them up. And they, they, society doesn't do very well with them because they really get rocking and rolling around 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. So uh, wolves have a tendency to put on a little bit of extra weight sometimes because they don't want to eat until late and a lot of restaurants aren't open late. So they're eating fast food, things like that. And then finally are my dolphins. And I chose dolphins because most people don't know this, but dolphins sleep unihemispherically. So half of their brain is asleep while the other half is awake and looking for predators. I thought that was kind of a good representation of my insomnia clients, the people who just don't have great sleep schedules. Uh, they're highly intelligent, also my type A personalities, but they, they have a perfectionistic quality to them and it makes it very difficult for them to actually accomplish tasks. And that makes it tough for them. Oftentimes they're the ones who are walking through my door with insomnia, having tried everything on the market and, and you know it hasn't really worked. And so once I started to know what people's chronotypes are through this chronotype quiz, it gave me a much better idea of how I could help them. And so going back to the idea with my patient where she said there were certain times of day where she would read better and write better and be more creative, I started to match up daily activities. And this is the practical part of the book that you were referring to. So I took 50 activities that people might do during the day, and I looked at what hormones would be required in order to get them to do that activity at their best. And then I matched it up with their chronotypes and, and it literally just fell into place. It was, it was a lot of fun and interesting. Uh, I've got over 200 evidence-based studies in the book, but I can tell people the best time to have sex, eat a cheeseburger, run a mile, ask their boss for a raise, you know, you name it. Well, and, and that's what was so totally cool about this is we had a productivity expert come into a business thing that I was, I was at one time, you know, had all the manager meetings and he went through and said, you know, sit down and, and, and really work through what time of the day is is your most productive and i was thinking well it's before i even walk in this office but you know once i'm in the office i found kind of this other window of you know where i was really on task and really alert and so i said oh and that happened for me to be about 11 30 to 1 30. and what he encouraged you to do is just to block that time out don't let any meetings or anything else unless it's like a really important meeting that you have to deliver on happen he said make your make your sales calls make the things that matter the most for you Make that your window of opportunity to get those things done. So, you know, I have this window of opportunity for me that literally actually starts about 4.30 in the morning and runs until about 7. And then by the time I get to work, I'm able to kind of focus on the personal stuff and get the, you know, the basic, get the calls out of the way, meet with people, do those kind of things. And then I have this this window of just, boom, I'm really good there. And then, yeah, I, after 4 o'clock, I'm, I'm almost worthless <laughs> yeah, you which, are a lion. There's no question. <laughs> which, you know, it was funny because when I did take the quiz, I was kind of that lion. I, I, I just barely made lion versus bear. So it was very close, which, which tells me I have some capacity to kind of push myself a little past that. Maybe not so much on a productivity work thing, but more on the social aspects of it. And I have pushed myself past it. When I do push myself outside of my what I'd call, I guess, a chronotype, I find that that's when I really struggle with quality sleep. So I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about, you know, what, what people could do one, you know, once they kind of know their chronotype to really kind of, you know, in one, I think that's excellent if they can manage their work schedule around their time. I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be far along in my career there that I can literally say, okay, this is when I'm going to do these things. Of course, someone needs to schedule a meeting during my, my peak time. I, I will do it. You know, it's not completely off, but I do book that time. So most people in the office will see me as busy. But if someone doesn't really have that capacity and they, they need to somewhat work to manage their sleep better, what are some tips that you could give them to sleep better and, 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 be healthier. Well, I mean, the first thing I'm always, you know, I'm always a proponent of is, you know, be true to your chronotype, right? And so first of all, take the quiz and figure out what you are and see if you can abide by that as best you can. I do give hints in the book as to how to fudge your chronotype a little in one direction or a little in another. So if you're a wolf, you might be able to be more like a bear. Or if you're a lion, you might be able to be more like the bear kind of moving yourself in the middle. The easiest way to do that is with light therapy 
light can actually push your circadian rhythm a little bit to you know forward or a little bit backward depending upon when you use it the problem is is that you have to use that light therapy then literally every day so you're kind of stuck in that world of using light therapy i would rather see people look at the sleep schedules that i i've given them in the book and really try to focus in on allowing yourself to do that one of the things that a lot of people find it's difficult is if they're not going to bed with their bed partner, right? So if your bed partner is one thing and you're another, is it okay that you two are in bed at different times? And as long as your partnership is fairly strong and as long as you're feeling fairly comfortable with it, you know, making time to have with that individual other than when lying in bed can actually make that a lot less pressure, right? And a lot less stress in terms of trying to figure that, that part out. When you look at, for example, a lion, you know, again, my earlier morning people, these are people who need to be going to bed around 9 30, 10 o'clock, you know, and, uh, and get, if they're get, especially if they're getting up at 5 30 in the morning. One thing that people should be aware of though, is, you know, not everybody needs eight hours of sleep. Okay. I've been a six and a half hour sleeper almost my entire life, but my wife needs eight and a half. So there are variable differences and some of those differences can be seen in chronotypes. My lions have a tendency to not need eight hours of sleep. They have a tendency to be my yeah, usually my six and a half to seven hour sleepers. My dolphins have a tendency to also be my six, six and a half hour sleepers. My bears love their sleep, which is interesting because I know you love sleep, but yet you have a lot of very lion-esque quality. So I think you're a lion with bearish tendencies, meaning that you love your sleep, you get good sleep. It's something that you look forward to. Like you said before, you call it dessert. I hadn't heard that before. I love it. That's great. I'm going to use that one. But, uh, you know, I, I think really kind of being true to your chronotype can actually be really important. Wolves are the ones who have the biggest problem with sleep because we like to stay up late and the world the next day is really not interested that we like to stay up late and we like to sleep late because we just beca are called lazy all the time. And we're not. As a matter of fact, uh, some wolves that I know are some of the most productive people I've ever dealt with. It's just that they're productive on their time. So, you know, one thing I tell people all the time is be sure to try to educate everybody in your world, whether it's your relationship partner or your work partners, bosses, managers, these types of people. You might be very, very surprised at their reactions. Like I had with this woman, you know, this, her manager didn't want to fire her, but he was going to have to. And once he learned that she had this scenario going on, now she goes to work later, she stays later. And she, I think she actually has recently gotten promoted. So if you educate people, you'll be surprised at the level of communication that can come about from this. I, I was talking with somebody just earlier today and they said, oh, I took the quiz and then I had my partner take the quiz and then I had my kids take the quiz. And uh, we discovered that we're all on different chronotypes. So we brought it. We're going to be bringing it up to our family counselor and talk with him about how can we better communicate, knowing and understanding more about what we're doing. I mean, that's amazing to me, you know, like that, that warms my heart. I was like, oh, my gosh, I never knew anybody would do that with this. But it's so super cool, right? I was like, holy cow, this is amazing. So, I mean, don't lock yourself into a particular sleep time. I think the best thing to do is look at the times as good suggestions and see if they work for you. If you can move your time around, that's the first place to start is with sleep. Everything else seems to fall in line after that. Yeah, and, and I think that's what was so cool about this is my wife sat down and, and took took the quiz and she she wanted to be a bear. And I knew she was a dolphin. I, I had no doubt whatsoever in my heart that she was a dolphin just based on her, her sleep patterns. You know, she's going back to bed for the second time that night when I'm getting up for the morning, you know, it's basically just kind of her, her style of sleep a little while, get up, go, you know, cause again, half her brain is probably still awake and she's got a thousand things going on. So she, she gets up and we've struggled a little bit, but I think one of the cool things is this, this book gives you a language to have a conversation. And that's why, again, the family counselor doesn't surprise me a bit because, you know, it, it is something that now they can actually have a conversation about, you know, when, what, what's going on in their lives that they may not have had the words to say before. It's like, well, you're just lazy because you want to sleep in all day. It's like, well, I just don't feel tired till one o'clock in the morning. And if that's what a wolf is going through and they're, they're the most creative between, you know, 11 and one o'clock in the morning, they don't want to miss that opportunity to experience that because, you know, if they for, try to force themselves to go to sleep, you know, their minds can be racing while they're laying there in bed, thinking of the thousand things they could create or do, but they're not able to do them if they're, they're being forced to a bedtime that's not really matching their lifestyle. Now, unfortunately, the rest of the world doesn't help the wolves 
because it kills me and I and I just I just shake my head every morning when I see this. I'll go out for my walk and it's still dark outside and I'm walking around and I come back and You're such the kids, a lion. It's the, unbelievable. Kid, <laughs> the kids are getting on the school bus at 6:30 and it's it's pitch dark outside. And I'm and and they're little kids and I'm thinking, you know, I I just I just I just can't believe that there you know there's little kids being put through shift work effectively because of the the nature of just they want to get the kids to school before rush hour and not have the buses on the road when there's so many cars but and and there's a safety issue there but I'm thinking hopefully the driver's a lion like me and is alert and awake and able to do their job driving a school bus at uh, 6:30 or earlier in the morning but you know so that's one of the things I really appreciate about the book was it does it gives us kind of a language to talk about. And so I want to kind of take this into the next phase of this is I am a lion based on taking the quiz. And then I took the little subsidiary quiz just to be sure because I was right on the line. I do have a little bit of bearish tendencies and you're right about that. My wife took the quiz and she's right at dolphin, just a little bit of bear. And so we're 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 not that far apart. There's only a bear between us. Um, (laughs) so from a relationship perspective, from a managing our lives perspective, you know, we've, we've come to some understandings about sleep and that I'm going to go to bed very early. She's going to come to bed later. She's going to sleep. And she typically doesn't disturb me too much. And I've, I've just told her, I said, no screens in the bedroom anymore because that disturbs and that wakes me up. And, and, and then I'm, then I'm, then the bear comes out. But um, because <laughs> I do really like my sleep. But then once I'm going to sleep, then she can leave the bed and not wake me. And then when I wake up in the morning, I can leave the bed and not wake her. So we've, we've kind of worked out a process there. So but you're doing a little dance, right? You're, we you're are. kind of figuring this whole thing out together, right? And that's that's what it's all about, right? Is like you were saying that level of communication. Yeah. And, and that's again, it's the relationship. The relationship's strong enough. That we're just we we're figuring it out on our own. But I like that the book has now given us a general language that she understands that I'm I'm not being antisocial by saying nine o'clock bedtime. I don't want to sit up and watch another hour of The Voice. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was I was social for that that last hour and and it was tough. But you know this this next one I'm 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 wiped. I got to go. And she doesn't understand how I can leave in the middle of a two hour show when they haven't, you know, finished. And I'm like, well, the, my brain's off. It's done. It's and, and five minutes from now, if I don't walk to the bedroom, I'll actually fall asleep between here and there. So let, let's let's just kind of walk through that scenario of maybe someone who isn't able to communicate quite as well as my wife and I are. And we, we don't always communicate well. There's times she really does want me to stay up and, and I just I have to say no. But. So uh, if you had a couple that walked in and, you know, she's, she's got, and I would, I would classify it as insomnia when someone wakes up for a period of three or four hours every evening, and then she'll go back to sleep and sleep very well until nine o'clock in the morning. But someone who's like that, that's waking up in the middle of the night, not sleeping through the night. And then a husband who's concerned about her health and well being because he has no problem falling asleep early and getting up early. How, how would you talk them through their, their scenarios. And and obviously they've taken the test. So you've, you've somewhat now classified them and understand you've got a, a dolphin and a lion in a relationship. So the good news is, is the dolphin and dolphins and lions work fairly well together because dolphin um, lions are so um, motivated and kind of have their set schedule and can go things and they're, and they're so structured that that's one of the things that dolphins can learn from the lions. The, obviously, the first thing to do is educate them. What is a dolphin? What is a lion? What's what works here? What works there? And also finding those times of communication that are going to work really well. You know, lions, it, they might be up at 530. But if you've got a dolphin partner, don't bother your dolphin partner at 530 in the morning, because that's when they're finally getting some of their their rest. Right. So understanding what that other person is going through, I think, opens up doors immediately. Number two, most of the time, lions don't don't feel any guilt surrounding dolphins, but dolphins have a tendency to get really upset with lions. And the reason that happens is because they're like, why do you get to sleep? Like, why did you get that ability? And I no longer have that ability to sleep. And so there's this weird jealousy that kind of happens because a dolphin might see you as a lion and say, 
how can you go to bed at nine o'clock at night? I'm, I'm not even remotely tired. And, and how can you wake up at four thirty, five 5 o'clock in the morning? You know, I, that's when I'm getting my best sleep. So that education piece is important, but dolphins can have a tendency to get a little upset about it. So as a lion, make sure that you don't take that the wrong way. It's not that they're upset with you per se. It's just that they're upset that they don't have the same ability that you have. Now, the good news is, is that dolphins can sleep a lot better by using techniques called sleep restriction, by looking at uh, magnesium as a supplementation. Melatonin can be helpful for some dolphins, if, depending upon if it's used correctly. And by just merely going to a sleep specialist, an insomnia specialist in particular, can be quite helpful for dolphins. And, and you know, lions have to be understanding of that. Lions have to say, well, I might not have this problem, but somebody I care about does have this problem. So I'm gonna be supportive, whether that's financial support, emotional support, whatever it happens to be, in order to help them you know, track this down and kind of start to figure this out. I'm also not going to, you know, plan that we go on a hike on Saturday at 7:30 in the morning because I know that would be terrible for my my partner. Even though I might really enjoy hiking and I want to do it with them, I need to find a time that's going to work better for for both of us. So some compromise might be involved there. The biggest thing that seems to happen between dolphins and lions that's of interest happen is usually sex, right? And so when is a dolphin and a lion going to be able to be sexually active? So that's a, I have a whole section in my book about this, about what is the best time for sex. So it's always kind of interesting to me. I, I did some research in this area. It turns out that 72% of the time when people have sex, it's purely for scheduling purposes. You know, it's convenience. You know, they're in bed. It's 11 o'clock at night. They're not wearing a whole lot of clothes. One person turns to the other and says, hey, you interested? Yeah, sure. Why not? And so there you go. Right. That's very different than desire right? Um, that's very different than that level of communication that you can have with a really good sexual experience. And what does that mean? So, you know, what I try to tell people about is the idea of maybe it's not such a bad idea to look at different times for having sex. So I actually created a matrix in the book. And so what you can do is you put in your chronotype and then your bed partner's chronotype, and then it gives you an early evening time and a morning time to have sex. And so you're probably wondering, well, why on earth would I want that? The hormones that you need for sex are very well known. You need testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, cortisol, and adrenaline to be high, and you need melatonin to be low. Remember, everybody, melatonin is that sleep hormone. So what do you think is going on at 11 o'clock at night? All the things that you want are high are low, and all the things that you want are low are high, right? So Saturday morning sex is probably one of, it's, you're hearing it here from the sleep doctor. Go ahead and have Saturday morning sex and see how it is. You'll be surprised at how much more alert you are, awake you are, and enjoying you are of that sexual experience. And then I give multiple times, again, in the earlier part of the, of the evening, before the melatonin levels rise, while the testosterone is still high, while the progesterone is still high, for everybody to enjoy themselves. And I also have two other matrices in the book. I have one for heterosexual couples, and I have one for male gay couples and for female gay couples, because the hormone structure is very, very different. And, and I think that's one of the one of the things that, and again, it is something you, you have to have this conversation about, but I you know, with my wife, it's like, I wanted it five o'clock in the morning because that's when everything's working for me. And, uh, she has just crawled back into bed for two hours and, and is sleeping better than I've, I've seen her sleep all night. You know, if, if I happen to wake up and know that she was up for three or four hours, she's like, you know, well, you know, I was, I was there. And I'm like, well, that's just convenience. That's not uh, optimal for you. And so I think I think you're onto something there. That when I when I was really looking at the matrix and saying what is you know what is this and when you know and, and thinking back on kind of our history, I was like, yeah, he's on he's onto something here. And if only we didn't have jobs, this would be a lot easier, and it wouldn't have to wait till Saturday. But uh, unfortunately, we do. And so you know, again, the value of this is that it's practical from the perspective of you know, one kind of knowing who you are and who they are. Two, just giving you this this language to have the conversation, and you know every good relationship, everything really good in your life. If you think about it, it, it starts with having great conversation about it, so that both parties are, and in some cases, the whole family, as you mentioned, are really kind of connecting the dots into what their needs are and what the needs are of the people around them and helping to manage it. And so just something as simple as saying, you know, I want to be a little bit more social. So I need to kind of adapt a little bit more towards the bear lifestyle to, to fit in a little bit easier, you know, is something that's definitely there. Now I'm, I'm married and I'm married to a dolphin. So social is not, you know, number one on my list beyond my family and beyond just getting along with her very well. So 
I do appreciate the tools that you put in the book that allow us to do that. And so the quiz is at thepowerofwinquiz.com. Is there anywhere else that you would like for me to send them for for this? Sure. Well, I mean, there's um, some really cool things at thepowerofwin.com. We've got uh, dolphins and lions and bears oh my. and wolves <laughs> testimonial. I know people have said that. <laughs> testimonials. So from people who have ta- who have read the book and who are different of these uh, chronotypes, talking about how the book was important to them and what they learned from it and what they've changed about their lives from it. So that part's pretty cool. We're also, uh, if people sign up for my newsletter, we give them s- sleep-specific tips for their chronotype and get people involved that way. So again, at thepowerofwind.com. Um, if you're just interested in, in general sleep information, uh, my website is thesleepdoctor.com. And so there's general information there as well. All right. So again, I really do appreciate you you coming on the show. And those links will be in the show notes for this podcast. This is episode 173. So you can go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 173. So again, Michael, really do appreciate having you on the show. This book, like I said, awesome tool to give us a language to communicate better with others and to know how to manage our own health and, and wellness. Well, thank you for having me. This has been great. I I certainly enjoy our conversation. And for your, you know, listeners out there, don't worry. You're you're not at a loss for sleep. Your chronotype will help you. I promise you. I think we've seen that here today. um, And you you'll definitely see it for tomorrow. Awesome. Thank you. Next time on the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, I'm going to share my best resistance training tips for mass and strength. If you're not doing resistance training, you're losing muscle and strength each year. Please join me next episode. Until then, have a happy and healthy day.